Producer Raptor. Hey, it's Greg. How's the brood? Oh, that's great. That's great. Hey, I had a brilliant idea for the Monster Odyssey yesterday. Yeah, it's awesome. It's a little too long for me to get into right now, but I'll send you an email. I already called Mike, told him all about it. He thought it was awesome, too. Even better, he gave me a brand new idea to incorporate that works perfectly with mine. Yeah, the one catch is that they both mean I have to start rewriting the script from scratch in order to incorporate them. Yeah, oh yeah, no, it's true. So I did. I, I Last night I started a brand new draft with a blank page. Yep, yep. And uh, long story short, I need to postpone the reading for a week uh, to get the new draft done because I'm totally going to miss the deadline now since I started over again. So can you uh, handle coordinating that for me? Awesome. Thanks. I got to go. I got to go. Yep. Nope. Uh, got got a call on the other line. Got to go. Oh, and Bailey says hi. Sends his love. All right. Bye. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me this week. Today, I'm going to talk to you about how to produce a workshop reading of a new play or musical in development, and why that is a crucial step in the playwriting or screenwriting process. Whether you're writing a stage play, a new musical, or even a TV pilot or feature film script, hearing the script read out loud by professional actors can give you a lot of insight into how the script is taking shape and provide a lot of important information to inform your next draft. Does the story make sense? How long is it running? What needs trimming? What needs fleshing out? Does the audience laugh where they're supposed to? Do they laugh where they're not? Do they connect with your characters? Does the story communicate your ideas effectively? All really important things to know. But before I get into how to produce a workshop reading of a play or musical, I've got some important updates for you about the reading that I've got coming up. Now, if you're here just to learn about how to put together your own workshop reading of a script, you can check out the timestamp index down in the video description below, and feel free to click ahead. But for those of you joining me on the journey that is making the monstrosity, I've got some important news that I want to share with you. It's true. Like I said at the top of the video, we're pushing the reading back a week. It's Sunday night as I shoot this, and the reading was supposed to be earlier today. I had some 11th hour insights into the script on Friday afternoon. These were ideas I'd been meditating upon for weeks that finally clicked, and it happened when I was about two-thirds of the way through the new draft. In talking things through with Mike that day, he contributed a new idea of his own. These were great suggestions, but they required a significant amount of work to implement, and there was no way I'd have the new draft done in time. So I did what I thought was best. I opened a brand new show file and started again from scratch with the new concepts baked in from the beginning. It's still the same show, still the same premise, but now more refined, more specific. Is it frustrating? Yeah. Am I unhappy about pushing off the reading? Sure am. But here's the thing, though. While I'd almost completed the previous draft before these insights, I already knew it wasn't what I wanted it to be. So if taking a few more days and putting in a little extra effort meant that I could get my ideas across more clearly and in a more compelling way, I was going to do that. Besides, ultimately when it comes to this project, the deadlines I have established are 100% arbitrary right now, and I'm really only accountable to myself. And Mike. But the important thing is, I'm getting it done, which is a lot more than I can, I can say about the progress I was making before I announced the reading date. And I'm having a lot of fun sharing the journey with you on here. So the new date of the reading is Sunday, August 23rd at 4 p.m. Pacific. I'm also happy to say that the entire cast from the first reading is back for more. Joining Tony and Hannah for this reading will be Graydon Schlichter as Brack, Mark Lopez as Brick, Scott Sharma as Tim, Carrie Matthews as our male swing, and Denise Nicholson as our female swing. Graydon has been a member of Theatre Unleashed since 2015, and he's helped me develop several of my plays, including Three Can Keep a Secret, and he created the role of Kevin in the anniversary issue, which later on became the award-winning Tattered Capes. Mark and Scott have also suffered through my writing on multiple occasions, working together on the world premiere of Super Sidekick, the first musical I developed with Mike. Scott also later on played the lead role in three productions of my first full-length play, Friends Like These, including two critically acclaimed runs at the Hollywood and San Diego Fringe Festivals in 2014. Mark has also worked on the world premiere of a short musical of Mike's and mine, Just Desserts. He played a noble paladin whose adventuring party succumbs to the evil influence of a cursed crown. Later on, he took on the role of terrorist Carl in TU's second iteration of A Very Die Hard Christmas. Denise and Carrie are longtime TU members. I had the pleasure of working with Denise in our production of Lauren Gunderson's Ada and the Engine last year. And Carrie, dude, Carrie has done a couple of runs of Die Hard, a couple of runs of Wonderful Life. He was in the anniversary issue. He's directed for us. He's an incredible improviser. He's done some of Mike's musicals. And he can rap. Did I tell you that part? He can, he can rap. Once we had kings and knaves, but both were slaves into practicing ignorant ways.
ways Feudalism withered away Hierarchies eroded but still remain Still bring the pain Wear rings and shame Knowledge of the past just feeds the fl Seriously, there isn't much that he can't do So that's our cast Now if you'd like to join us for the reading And aren't already connected to me on Facebook I will be happy to send you the link All you have to do is go to my website GregoryCrafts.com Hit contact on the main menu It'll scroll you down to the widget And join my mailing list I promise it's not spam on Friday the 21st, I'm sending the Zoom link out to my subscribers so they can join in this Sunday. If that's a little too involved, you can consider joining me this Wednesday from noon to 2 Pacific as I once again live stream here on YouTube for a couple of hours as I work on the script. Just think of it as watching paint dry, but with 100% more bacon. I'll share my screen so you can check out my draft and the notes as I go. Last time I had some technical issues, it's true, with the streaming software and with my mic, but I managed to get them all sorted out eventually. and. Uh, I think I'll have it well in hand this time around. I still don't know if this is actually interesting for anybody, but I had a good time, and I certainly don't mind trying again. Let's get on to the meat of this video. How to produce a workshop reading of a play or musical. Honestly, it's not that hard. Okay, first off, what do you need? You need a script, a cast, a location, even an online one, and an audience, preferably one full of people whose opinions you trust. Let's start with the audience. Who do you want at your reading? Well, you want folks who can listen to the script with a critical ear, who can articulate suggestions clearly, and who can help you identify your script's strengths, weaknesses, and potential problems. Actors, producers, other writers, and creative types make excellent candidates for your reading audience. But also, don't underestimate having a few trusted, non-creative, non-industry folks there. Bring in a few folks who represent your target audience. They'll be the best ones to tell you if your show resonates or not. Okay, location. Right now, the easiest, most acceptable location for a reading is online. Pay the 15 bucks for a premium Zoom account, or if it's a smaller event, go with Google Hangouts. In non-pandemic times, use a living room for more private or personal events, or if you're anticipating a larger audience or want to facilitate more networking, rent a theater or a meeting room for a few hours. You'll be glad you did, because presentation is everything. Casting. Where do you find actors? In bigger cities, especially ones with a good tourist theater scene or a strong TV film industry, actors are pretty much everywhere. If you don't already have an established network, consider posting a breakdown on casting sites like Backstage or Actors Access. If you're in a smaller area, find the local theater companies in your town or in the surrounding towns. If all else fails, use your friends. But remember, you're looking for people who can bring the text to life, not just read it off the page. It's a big difference. And finally, the script. I'm assuming you already know how to write one. If not, that's a topic for another video. Let me know in the comments if that's something you want to see me cover in explicit detail sometime soon. Okay, we are going from what to how. How do they work? If it's an online reading, we set the Zoom call up so that only the writer, the moderator, if you have one, and the cast can be seen and heard. Everyone else is muted with the cameras off until the Q&A. At the top of the event, the host welcomes everybody, says a few words about the show, about what they're looking to accomplish with this reading. They introduce the writers, if the writer's not the one hosting, and the readers, and then gives any special instructions to the audience, uh, like pointing out the specific things they want the audience to look for and consider during the reading. And then, it's time for the reading. Let the actors do their thing. Now, if the script is long enough to have an intermission, take five or ten minutes for a stretch or bathroom break. Everybody will thank you. At the end, the host comes back on, thanks the readers, then opens the floor for Q&A from the audience. At that point, everybody turns their cameras on, and the host moderates questions and comments to and from the audience for the writer. You usually want to set aside about an hour for this. Now, if you're fortunate enough to plan an in-person reading, provide snacks for everybody to munch on during the Q&A. Also, provide water to your readers. It's customary to put a bottle by each reader's chair so they don't have to get up and get one themselves. And don't forget to practice gratitude. Everyone who is there is taking valuable time out of their lives to come and support you and your work, either by lending their voices or their ears. Respect their time, start on time, don't run long, and be gracious. Remember, they're doing you a favor. Final word, I would say the three biggest things to have in mind when you're going into a reading of your own work are, one, don't take anything personally. You may not be prepared to hear some of the feedback that you're gonna get, and it may feel like people are tearing your baby apart, and that's true, kind of, but if they're good people, they're trying to help you make it better. Two, know what you want to get out of this experience. But just know that if you want universal praise, you're probably in the wrong career field. And three, when it comes to the feedback that you get, 
Take what works and try it, and feel free to ignore the rest. You'll know the good suggestions from the bad. Trust me. Finally, if you are no good at organizing this kind of thing or just don't want to deal with it, find your own producer raptor. They're worth their weight in raw meat. Trust me. He's right there on Andy Serkis's face. Yes, I have a bust of Andy Serkis in my bookshelf. Don't ask me why. So hey actors, you want three good reasons to participate in your friend's reading? Here you go. Number one, you get to practice your craft. A friend of mine once told me that anytime you have the chance to act in a room that somebody else is paying for, take it. Are you working regularly? Are you in a class? If you answered no to both of those questions, then what are you doing to keep your skills sharp? A reading may offer you the chance to play against your normal type and give you the opportunity to stretch yourself creatively in a low-risk environment. Take it. Number two, networking. You know who shows up at readings? Other creative people. And most of these other creative people have their own projects going on, and they need their own actors. If you're looking for something to do, talk to them. Three, casting. You know who they're going to consider first when it's time to mount the first production or shoot the script? The original readers. They may not cast you, but they'll certainly consider you. Ask most of the folks in the cast of my readings. And hey, bonus. Number four, free food. I'll be honest, there were a few times when I was starting out as a broke-ass actor, and I did readings with some groups just so I could get a couple of free slices of pizza and some cookies. I personally hate the whole starving artist myth, and I'll tell you why in a future video. But when you're starting out, or if you've fallen on hard times, which happens to everybody, this is a scrappy way to get a semi-decent meal. If you've made it this far, thank you again for sticking around. I hope you'll join me later this week for my second live stream writing session, or after that, for the reading itself. And if you've enjoyed this video and are just as hyped for the monstrosity as I am, take a second and smash that like button. Then go down and smash that subscribe button and smash that little bell next to it so you know when the next episode drops. Until then, be well. Don't forget to wash your hands, and please, wear a mask when you go out in public. Thanks again. I'll see you next time. Don't. No, 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 no. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I didn't see that coming.